Okay, so today's video is about a multi-body part, specifically a multi-body part that is going to be used as a reference file for drawing out subparts and turn, turning those subparts into, into parts that will be used in an assembly. So here I have my multi-body part file, which has parts A, B, C, D, E, and F. The parts have been drawn in such a way that using cut extrudes and boss extrudes, I've formed a, a cube puzzle. If I turn off parts A and B, you can see that they're, these parts in, intermingle with other parts of the puzzle. So let's take these individual parts and turn them into singular parts of their own for as assembling within an assembly. So if we take part A and we click insert into new part, we can take part A and insert it into its own part. So let's name the part. Here is our cube master file that we've just been in. Save the part. And the part, as you can see, references the master um, the master part file. Let's pick a color, make it the same color as it was in the origination master file, master reference file. Save it again. Okay, so now we have part A. Part B, let's do the same. So insert into new part as a part. Okay, save it as part B. Again, you can see cube master file is the file that we're drawing all these parts from. It is the reference file. Let's choose a color, make this yellow. So we're going to continue this for parts C, D, E, and F. But I'm not going to show you these. Um, you just follow the same path. This looks like a good point to split the video. I'm going to continue making parts C, D, E, and F. But I'm not going to show these in the recording. I'm just going to make them and then pick up at a point just after. OK, welcome back to part B. So let's have a look at the master file again. So we're in the referencing master file for the parts we've created. Parts A, B, C, D, E, and F. We've already created these as, as subparts that are directly linked to this master file, but we don't need the master file anymore. So let's um, open or create an assembly. So parts A to F. So open these and let's insert each within our new assembly. OK, so now let's let's assemble. Oh, first of all, part A, as it was inserted as the first part, is um, shown with an F, F, which means it's uh, fixed. If we change this to floating and uh, constrain by the three planes, we can change this from fully constrained F to constrained, but without an F in brackets or a minus. So it's just good practice. So A is our master part. So now we take part B and let's assemble part B to part A. This is the interesting bit where I have to remember how I put the puzzle together. So we're just mating out of faces just to assemble these parts. So just while I'm assembling, the reason why you might want to model a part as a multi-body part 
use that as a reference part for producing downstream referencing parts for then putting into an assembly could be that you're building a very, very complicated model that you can't model each aspect in individually without having without modeling everything together in, in one large master file. So if you've got some complicated geometry, some surfaces or something similar, you may want to create a multi-body part file, split split it into parts, turn those parts into individual parts, and then import those parts back into an assembly. Another reason, a reason why you might not put, leave those parts in in an, a multi-body part and put them into assembly might stem from uh, the need to put together. Uh, if you're working on working in a CAD practice, you might want to be putting together assemblies and sub-assemblies for your for your production model. So you you might be required to work in assemblies, but you might want to use multi-body parts as reference files. Okay, so you can see I've uh, assembled my part. So here is my assembly part, which consists of a, of a bunch of parts created from a multi-body part file. And here you can see part A contains the reference link to the master file. Part B contains the master link to the master file. 